It's February 15th. I have been trapped in an elevator. The story starts with Jennifer, who is one of the last people in the office. On a Friday night, she's planning to catch a plane to New York or a long weekend to see her ex-fiancé on Valentine's Day, so she writes him an email. She doesn't want to be late for her flight, so she grabs some candy and leaves the office at the same time. Guy is also getting ready to leave work. They both end up waiting for the elevator. At the same time, Jennifer gets on the elevator on the 49th floor, and Guy joins her on the 42nd floor. Guy starts chatting and joking with Jennifer, but she doesn't seem very interested in talking. Suddenly, the elevator stops, and the guy tries to fix it by using the keys and pressing the alarm button, but nothing works. Even though the electricity in the elevator seems to be on, they can't get it to move. The guy tries to open the door, but it's stuck. They try to get the attention of the working camera, but no one responds to make things worse. None of their phones have service because they their first stories underground. Jennifer starts to worrying about missing her flight and wonders where the building security is. 15 minutes later, they try calling for help and banging on the door, but no one can hear them. Guy thinks there might be an escape hatch, so Jennifer awkwardly climbs onto his shoulders, and they check the elevator ceiling. She hurts her hand a little while banging on it, so Guy puts her back down an hour later. Jennifer realizes she never catch her flight. Even though a guy tries to joke around to make her feel better, she curses everything and everyone. They finally introduce themselves and continue bantering which guy started when he got on the elevator. Jennifer doesn't have water in her thermos, so the guy offers his bottle, but they joke about opening the wine he had. Instead, they both realize they have bottle openers in their bags and laugh about it. They don't open the wine, but Jennifer accepts his water as a consolation for not having any real food. Jennifer gives the guy some candy. She thinks they should save their snacks because they might be stuck in the elevator until Tuesday. Four hours later, Jennifer really needs to pee, but she's too embarrassed to do it in front of the guy. He suggests she go in the corner or in her thermos. She makes him close his eyes and cover his ears. Guy starts singing, and she finally pees. She can't hear anything after that, so she draws more on the elevator wall. Later, they play a game and start talking about personal things. The guy says he doesn't have anyone looking for him because he's too into his job. Jennifer says she's the same. She says she wanted to surprise someone in New York, but he probably didn't want her to come. The guy decides it's time to open the wine and gives it to her. They drink to being alive. Later, they draw each other and get closer. The guy admits he saw her before in the office building but didn't say anything because he didn't want to seem like a stalker. She doesn't mind, she laughs. They finish their drawings and show each other her drawing of him is funny while his is serious. Jennifer apologizes and takes a photo of the drawing, saying she use it as her profile picture if they survive. Then they talk about food, but since they're both hungry, she asks him to change the subject. He suggests different topics, and she picks talking about making love. She gets up, turns her camera on him, and asks asks about the dirtiest place he's made love. The guy is a little shy, so she shares her story first. Jennifer tells him about one of her ex-boyfriends in college and the time they slept together in a library. When it's the guy's turn, he still doesn't feel like sharing his story because he doesn't think he has an interest. When Jennifer tells him to make one up, so the guy tells a story about a hot girl who wanted to be with him during a work picnic. He says that they got drunk and got in the car, and she begins to undress while he's driving. The guy gets weird and uncomfortable again, telling Jennifer that he got aroused and and he had to stop. He apologizes because he thinks he crossed the line, but she says that it's cool. God approaches her awkwardly and kisses her, then begins to undress her. They make love in the elevator after a guy tells her that he could fall in love with her. You are amazing, I fall in love with you, but she gets away from him. Jennifer tells him that she wants to get back together with her ex. That was the reason why she wanted to go to New York and surprise him to patch things up and make everything better. Unlike guys she thinks that even though their encounter was fun, they should just keep it casual because what she she has with her ex is real, but I love him. Jennifer is honest with him about how she feels and what her previous relationship was like. Guy, on the other hand, thinks that they connected and that her ex doesn't deserve her. She gets mad because she clearly still loves him and tells Guy that when they get out of the elevator, they'll just go back to their separate lives. Guy keeps insisting that they were meant to be together, and he begins to cry because he feels alienated. Even though they're locked in a box together, suddenly something flips in him, and Jennifer can feel it happen. The guy begins to tell her the truth about who he is. He lied to her about where he worked and about his name too. The man tells her that he didn't just notice her but that he actually saw her every single day at work. He takes out his phone and shows Jennifer's security photos he has on it of her, listing out the times and dates when it was. The guy even has a video of her getting into the elevator that night. Jennifer is afraid. He tells her that he's actually the building's security guard. He gets angry when he explains that no one ever notices people like him. 
she didn't even recognize him. Even though he works at the front desk, he thinks that he knows her more than her ex and tells her that he planned everything that happened that night. The man takes out a key and unblocks the elevator. Jennifer can't believe what he did to her, and she says that she called the cops and that he'll rot in jail. He doesn't like that, so he grabs her, and they begin to struggle, flailing her legs. During the fight, Jennifer breaks the elevator key. They continue to fight, and she knocks him out with her shoe. Jennifer is afraid that she killed him, so she approaches him to check. When he suddenly jumps up and knocks her down, they both remain unconscious in the elevator. After a while, Jennifer wakes up to find the man conscious already. She asks him why he did it. His reasoning is that he wanted to get her away from everything so that they could connect on a human level. He says that they didn't just have a date but an entire relationship in the weekend stuck in the elevator. Jennifer thinks that he's not going to get away with it because someone will surely come to get them out. Unfortunately, she finds out that the guy has taken all the four that weekend and the two other guards won't be coming in until the extended weekend is over on Tuesday. Jennifer asks what he'll do and he he says that he would rather kill her than go back to prison. He says that he never forced her to do anything, but Jennifer tells him that he kidnapped her, which sends him into a rage spiral. When he calms down, he opens the present that Jennifer had bought for her ex-fiancé. He finds a shirt and a box in the bag. The guy puts the shirt on and tells Jennifer to open the rest of the present. Jennifer opens the box to reveal cigars complete with the necessary tools, like the cigar scissors and lighter. He lights a cigar and taunts. Jennifer further, even saying that she could have gotten her ex back with all the nice gifts. In a gust of irony, he wishes her a happy Valentine's Day. Sometime later, the guy apologizes to Jennifer for scaring her and asks her if they can reconcile. He asked for another chance and tells her that she doesn't have to answer right away. But to think about it, the guy comments on the travel ad that's playing in the elevator, saying that the people in the video look happy together. He tells Jennifer that he'll take her to the resort from the ad one day. He's bothered by the neon light in the elevator that isn't working, so he breaks it with Jennifer's thermos. The guy realizes that that the light bulbs under the ceiling panels must get replaced sometime, and he thinks that he can get that panel off and get out of the elevator, though there as he breaks it open with the thermos. Jennifer stands up next to him. He asks Jennifer to give him a boost to get up there, promising that he'll come back for her. However, Jennifer thinks it would be easier if he gave her a boost because she doesn't have enough strength to do it. He doubts that she want to come back for him, and she called the cops. Jennifer tells him everything that he wants to hear and convinces him to give her a boost after everything that we've been through. I don't want you to go to jail. She gets on his shoulders and pulls out of the elevator. The guy tells her where the ladder and the door are happy that they finally managed to escape. Jennifer turns around and gives him the finger, pissing him off as she climbs the ladder. He finds a way to get out of the elevator too. The guy binds two pieces of clothing together and throws them over the elevator beam. Jennifer is already moving towards the door. As he starts climbing up, he tells her that she'd better run because now she's going to die. Jennifer gets close to the door. When he already reaches the level she's on and follows her. She opens the door and screams for help. Then he suddenly grabs her and hurls both of them back in the elevator. They both fall unconscious. Jennifer wakes up first and sees the fire sprinklers conceiving a new plan to get herself out. She tries to activate the fire alarms by lighting a cigar. But when she doesn't manage that, she starts a small fight. As the elevator fills with smoke, the guy wakes up and she punches him, breaking his nose. Jennifer succeeds in restraining him with a piece of clothing. He tells her that the fire alarm won't come on but that they'll just get soaked and electrocuted. Jennifer threatens to seriously hurt him and makes him confess to everything that he's done to her. She turns her camera on and shoots herself, explaining what she knows about what happened. Jennifer turns the camera on him and asks for his real name. He says he's called John Deacons. John confesses that he got them stuck in the elevator on purpose. He even etched the drawing on the wall that Friday. He used the key to stop the elevator while she wasn't looking. Jennifer makes him admit to trapping her in the elevator. John admits to trapping and kidnapping her. She keeps questioning him so he can confess to the camera everything that he did to her, from hitting her head on the ground to throwing her against the wall. Jennifer asks why, and John says that he just wanted a date with her. If he had asked her out normally, she would have turned him down. John tells her who he was before he became a security guard. He was an accountant who worked for a big firm and was a real hotshot. John tells her that the story about the girl in the car was true but that it ended differently than what he implied. He ended up missing an exit and drove straight into a ravine. The car flipped seven times until it was stopped by a tree. The girl was dead on impact. John got only six months in jail because he had the resources to keep himself out. When he got out, the only job he could get was as a security guard. After a few months, he wanted to feel like 
himself again for a little while. Jennifer still doesn't understand why he chose her. He says it's because she's great. Monday comes, and they're still stuck with one of the other security guards. Ed takes his new girlfriend to the building to show her the roof. When they walk inside, he looks for John, not finding him. He checks the security monitors. Ed sees John and Jennifer stuck in the elevator, waking them both up. Jennifer begs him to get them out of there, and he tells her that he'll come down and get them out while his girlfriend falls asleep on the couch. Ed gets to the elevator and pulls the doors open with a crowbar. Jennifer wants to get out, but he tells her that he needs to open the doors completely first and moves away. Suddenly, John knocks her out. He tells Ed that he's there and gives John his keys. John tells him that it's not working, and Ed says he'll climb in to help him. He gets stuck in the elevator and sees that something has happened inside. When John turns on the elevator and cuts him in half, knocks Jennifer out again, then takes her to his car and puts her in the trunk. John goes back into the building and disposes of Eddie's body and his clothes. He cleans himself up and puts on his uniform, sliding a cigar into his pocket when John gets to the front desk. He deletes all of the videos from the security cameras. Edie's girlfriend wakes up, and John kills her too, then drops her in the shaft as well. John gets to his car and takes Jennifer to a secluded location to dispose of her. He pours gasoline into a dumpster to prepare before he opens the trunk. John tells Jennifer that he still likes her, and it's unfortunate they couldn't be together. Jennifer pretends that she's dead, and when John goes over to the dumpster. She hits him over the head, gets in the car, and starts driving. At one point, she stops when she finds the lid in the tray. Jennifer starts backing up the car, and rams into a terrified John. She comes out and sees that he's in the dumpster. Jennifer relights the cigar and walks away. Then she flicks the lip bud into the dumpster, burning John alive. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like for more movies. See you in the next video.